So this is the second day of the writing equations, and I want to review the three forms that we have learned. We've learned slope-intercept form, and slope-intercept form is specifically y is equal to mx plus b. You need to know this by now, where m is equal to the slope and 0 comma b is the y-intercept. We also have standard form, which we learned about yesterday. Standard form is ax plus by is equal to c. And what's important about a, b, and c is that a, b, and c are integers. And they're integers, so this thing, if I have like 2 sevenths x plus 3 fourths y is equal to 2, that's a no-go for standard form. What I would have to do to get that in standard form is I'd have to multiply both sides by a least common denominator, which in this case would actually be a 28, 7 times 4. Uh, that would give me 8x plus 21y is equal to 56, and that's an acceptable standard form. Next, uh, I know that a, b, and c are lowest whole number ratio, or we'll say lowest terms. So this one is not good. If I were to have 7x minus 14y is equal to 21, that doesn't work because 7, 14, and 21 can be simplified. I could divide by 7 and make that x minus 2y is equal to 3. That would be good, just like this one's good. And these two are not. Lastly, um, I know that a has to be positive. And so this is just a very simple one. Sometimes we're left with something like a negative 2x plus 3y is equal to 5. And that's a no-go because I need to multiply both sides by a negative 1 to make it 2x minus 3y is equal to negative 5. That is good. The one with the leading term negative, that's not good. So those are the rules for standard form. Finally, we have point-slope form. And point-slope form, uh, I know I'm going to sound repetitive here when I say you need to have this memorized, but you really do by now. Do what you can, but don't wait on this. This has got to be memorized, and this is something you should be working with quite a lot. y minus y1 is equal to slope times x minus x1. This is something you would have used extensively on last night's homework. So then we've got these, uh, the only difference with yesterday and today is today you're going to have some directions that say put into slope-intercept form. Why did we wait till the second day for that when that's kind of the easier form? Well, because sometimes it can be a little too easy and you can get a little bit lazy with what you actually need to do. For instance, number one, I could say give it a line with a slope equal to 4 and a y-intercept of 0, negative 2 thirds give me the point, the line in slope-intercept form. Well, really, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b, and I've got m, m is 4, and I have b, b is negative 2 thirds. So I'm done. I mean, there's not nothing to show there for that one. But if I, uh, I, I could easily kind of trick you and say, um, now give me a line with a slope of negative one half and an x-intercept of five zero. This is a little bit tricky because because it's an x-intercept, I'm going to have to use another method. I'm going to have to use point-slope form, and I'm using point-slope form. Um, because I don't have a y-intercept. I'm going to go, you know, point-slope form is y minus y1 is equal to slope times x minus x1. So I got y minus 0 is equal to negative 1 half x minus 5. Um, and that gives me y is equal to negative 1 half x plus 5 halves. And that's my slope-intercept form of that line. I could also have one that says that the x-intercept is negative four sevenths and the y-intercept is two. 
So if I'm given two intercepts, I can generate that the ordered pairs are negative 4 sevenths 0 and 0 2. And once I have the ordered pairs, I can say, well, I first need to figure out what the slope is. And I know that slope is the change in y over the change in x. Um, and if I subtract the y's over the subtraction of the x's, I would get 0 minus 2 over negative 4 sevenths minus 0. Oops. And that's equal to negative 2 over negative 4 sevenths, which I can simplify to just 2 over 4 sevenths. But really what I want to do is get that out of 7, so I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator both by a 7 and get 14 over 4. And that simplifies even further to 7 over 2. Now, knowing that it's 7 over 2, um, I can use that. I can use that later. So I have a slope, um, and what I can do, I can, I can use the y-intercept here because I have the y-intercept. I know that the y-intercept is 2. And I can use the slope and just go right into slope-intercept form. I can say y is equal to 7 halves x plus 2 and be done. However, I can also use point-slope form. Let's say I want to use point-slope form. Point-slope form is y minus y1 equals slope times x minus x1. And if I didn't want to use the y-intercept, I could use the x-intercept and treat it like problem number 2. Uh, my y-intercept was this ordered pair here, negative 4 sevenths 0. So I know that y minus 0 is equal to 7 over 2, x minus a negative 4 sevenths or plus 4 sevenths. So I got y is equal to, and if I distribute the 7 halves, I get 7 halves x plus, and then if I multiply 7 halves times 4 sevenths, uh, the sevenths would cancel and I would get 4 over 2, which is 2. So notice how I get the same thing. There's more than one way to do these problems. Okay, now we have a few little things that can happen. Um, one thing to know is that any time a slope is zero, we have a horizontal line. This is also something we, we used in the last test. We know that that's going to be like a y is equal to something. So this can pop up if I have a problem that looks like this. Find me the equation of the line passing through 2, negative 3 and 5, negative 3. Well, if I calculate a slope on this, the um, slope is going to be equal to, let's see, it's going to be negative 3 minus negative 3 over 2 minus 5. And negative 3 minus negative 3 is the same as negative 3 plus 3. 2 minus 5 is negative 3. Um, negative 3 plus 3 is 0, so I get 0 over negative 3, and that's just 0. I know that that's a horizontal line, and all horizontal lines are y equals. And if I look at what the y is, it's negative 3 and negative 3. y would have to be negative 3. But I didn't even have to go that far. I could have looked and seen that the y's were the same and jumped right ahead to y equals negative 3. Let's say I wanted to get the equation passing through negative 5, 2, and negative 5, negative 7. So if I calculate a slope, I'm going to get 2 minus a negative 7 over negative 5 minus a negative 5. And that is 2 plus 7 over negative 5 plus 5 or 9 over 0. Anytime you divide by 0, it's undefined. And you may ask, well, how do I plug undefined into these equations? You don't. You need to know that undefined means it's a vertical line. And if it's a vertical line, it's an x equals. And it's an x equals whatever these two have in common. They both have a negative 5 for their x. So it's x equals negative 5. But you didn't even have to go that far. You could have just seen that the x's were the same and skipped right ahead to the fact that x is equal to negative 5. So see if you can try that on this one. Don't calculate the slope. It's the equation passing through negative 7, negative 1 half, and negative 9, negative 1 half. What's the same in these two? They both have the same y. 
and so it's going to be a y equals negative one half. No need to do a slope. If two of those coordinates are the same, it's going to be either a horizontal or a vertical line. Okay, some mistakes that happen. Here's the number one mistake. Number one mistake is taking points like 2, negative 4, and 5, 7, um, and calculating a slope by doing 2 minus 5 over negative 4 minus 7. Well, clearly we can see what's wrong with that. You're doing the x's over the y's. Those need to be switched. You just did the x over the y by mistake. That is probably the number one slope mistake that happens. Um, here's the number two mistake that happens, and it's also with slope. If I gave you the point 1, 5, and negative 2, negative 4, that would mean that my slope um, ends up being, let's see, a 5 minus a negative 4 over negative 2 minus 1. And I think you can see there we just did a wrong order. Make sure you subtract in the right order. The number three mistake I bring up because this one is now particular to this assignment. It happens when you have a problem like this. Find the equation in slope intercept form if m equals 2 and it's passing through negative 5, 1. So the mistake happens when someone wants to jump right away to slope-intercept form and say, well, that's just y is equal to 2x plus 1, mistakenly thinking that that one and that one match. But the problem is that if I try to do that, 1 is not the y-intercept. So I can't do that. I can't just jump to that and say that, well, I like that really, that one. I, you can't do that. Uh, one is not the y-intercept. We don't even know what the y-intercept is. What I can do, and what I should do, is I should start with point slope form. Point slope form, y minus y1 equals slope times x minus x1, lets us take all of those numbers and jump right into an equation. y minus 1 is equal to 2 times x minus a negative 5, or x plus 5. This is y minus 1 equals 2x plus 10, or y is equal to 2x plus 11. And that's the correct form of the line.